God, it's so weird to have no screen and yet talk. I'm like, what's going on? So, as you know, Jupiter is going to be entering. In Taurus, this particular May, May 1st week. Okay. Now you now here's the thing. Let, let's let's look at the reality of transit. Let's say somebody is 60 years old, right? Someone is 60 years old. They must have had at least six, actually five, five, five to six cycles of Jupiter. Like six times Jupiter would have come in the same sign of Taurus and they're not doing well. Let's say they're living below poverty line. So for us to say that, you know, Jupiter and Taurus is supposed to bring in all about money and wealth. It's not. And I'm gonna show you towards the end of this particular live stream, how you can check that. Okay, of course, I'm not gonna give you everything now. Then <laughs> There's no fun. This is a couple Raj movie. There's a twist at the end, right? That's all how all my movies are, <laughs> both of them. Rahu and Ketu, hopefully you guys saw my movie, Rahu and Ketu. Uh, Saturn is still in works. It's the right time, waiting for the right time. But anyway, um, so Jupiter is gonna come in Taurus. What is Jupiter? So there's two pool of thoughts when it comes to Jupiter. On the Vedic astrological side, Sun will represent the things that Jupiter represents in Nadi, in Nandi Nadi. Like Jupiter will represent gold. In Vedic astrology, Sun will represent gold. So on a worldly perspective, what we see is that Jupiter, when it's in Taurus, Gemini and then Cancer and then Leo, this is going to be just on a worldly level shows growth of gold, rise of gold. But see, on a personal level, it becomes personal, meaning we have to see how Jupiter is placed. So when Jupiter represents, see, Jupiter is not money. Jupiter is abundance, being fortunate, Okay, prosperity, and that is different for everybody because, for one, it could be money, for the other, it could be their gurus, their knowledge, their land, their food, their farm, their animals, their children. So, it's very subjective for what one is being fortunate or having prosperity or abundance is. Because if you're going to talk about money, that is Venus, Venus is money. Let's just get out of the way. Moon will represent the cash flow, but Venus is the money. So when Jupiter goes into Taurus, the sign of Venus, what it shows is that this is the time where naturally everyone on a world level is going to try accumulating things. Okay, it's going to try accumulating things, trying to gather things. This actually becomes much easier on every level, doesn't matter what your chart is for you to gather things. So let's say if somebody who's a homeless person watching this on their live stream on their smartphone, because even they have smartphones now, even you'll be able to get far more food to eat every day. You will have much better, less dirtier clothes every day when Jupiter is in Taurus. So that's what it's doing. For a billionaire, what it's going to do, they're going to extend their 100-foot yacht to a 500-foot yacht. For a mid-level person, what it's going to do, instead of you, let's say, putting 5,000 every two months into your investments so they can grow, you're going to start now paying 8,000, 10,000 every six months. It all depends upon what level you're at. So we can't just say Jupiter and Taurus, get ready. Oh boy, wealth and money is gonna come in. Trades for everybody. Yeah, that's that not that's not how it works. Taurus, what happens is Jupiter's taking the quality. 
Jupiter is taking the quality of Venus. Okay. And because it's taking the quality of Venus, it's going to start providing support for Venus. It's going to start su providing support for Venus. Which means, and especially, it was actually in Jupiter in Taurus. As soon as Jupiter entered Taurus, I met my wife. Okay. Jupiter brought me my wife because it started to, started to behave like uh, Venus. It started to take the qualities of Venus and bring it into people's lives. Because even in uh, besides the Nadi part, I have seen, and, and of course I know why I've seen this, but I've seen that even if Jupiter is not connected with any planet, it can still do things related to that planet. Now remember, the way you look at these Jupiter transit is when Jupiter is especially in trying one seven or three eleven relationship with another planet. I don't know if this is like going here or going over your head. And if it's going over your head, take the simplest thing you'll ever learn in your life, which is a Nandi Nadi course on my academy, Maga Vedic Astrology Academy, which I'm currently teaching. And I have to make the part two video of Saturn, Jupiter, Bhachakra. There's so much more because life gets so much easier once you just learn this. After this, once you learn Nadi, you will probably, like Nandi Nadi especially, you will, you probably won't even care for astrology after that. Because you'll be like, I know exactly what's going to happen. Once you know that, you will probably won't even care for astrology after that. You will just know the whole thing like in a snapshot second. And as you know, I was like doing the live readings on even Instagram, I had to stop it. Whenever I do live readings, it becomes so accurate. But I take some energy transfers and I have to deal with it. Ever since I started doing those live readings on Instagram, did 40 of them, I think. It affected me like nobody's business. I can't even tell you what I experienced. I can, I've got to keep that to myself. Only my astrologer friends know. So I stopped it. Can't do it anymore. But regardless, the one thing you should know with Jupiter and Taurus is that when Jupiter affects a planet, this is where the real magic of the Jupiter will take place. Okay. So if somehow through Nadi perspective, okay, which pretty much in here you can even see, just take normal Vedic Jupiter aspect if you want. 579 or conjunction. So if Jupiter is going to be connected with Sun, you will see your prestige will rise. Your respect will rise. Your honor will rise in this particular year. Now you must be thinking, what about like you gave an example of a homeless person? How is it they're going to rise? Well, guess what? If let's say Jupiter was not affecting their Sun, Last year, people will treat them badly. People will be like, get out of there. I have nothing. Go, go to get a job, right? That's what someone will say. Now what happens is because that particular homeless person has Jupiter going over sun, people will be more respectful to that person. Oh, what, what do you need? Are you suffering? Okay, here. No worries. We all are. We all, we all go there. We all... Deal with what you have done here. Here's some money. So for that one year, or not even one year, maybe for that four months, while Jupiter is going over those degrees of sun, they will get much more respect. That's all it is. So what happens is, it's not like everybody's going to become Narendra Modi. Everybody's going to become like Tata or some famous person. Is that your respect, your honor rises you tend to get a little bit better respect from society when Jupiter is somehow affecting the sun. And again, there's a different way of looking at it with Nadi. It is so simple. It is actually much simpler than any astrology you can mention to me. Mention me any astrology. It's so much more simpler than that. It's instant, instant prediction, instant. Meaning you can even see in Nandi Nadi, 
how and when children will come in and which child will come first, boy or girl, it's instant. Okay, so this is how you see it. I see somebody start and I know where Jupiter is coming in Taurus. They're going to get on her. Now, let's say, for example, now, now think about it. You have Sun Rahu conjunction. Jupiter goes over Sun, or let's say Jupiter aspects Sun and Rahu, depending on the degree you will see. When it gets to Rahu, now it brings in confusion in a person. Like, what do I do? This is not working. Maybe this will work. Oh, how do I go about this? Ideas coming. You are filled with nothing but ideas when Jupiter is looking at Rahu. But when it comes to execution, you have no idea where to go with execution. That's what happens. You have no idea what to do with the execution part. Why? Because Rahu is just the head. Rahu has no hands or legs to work and do something. So what happens is one just goes from one day to another with idea, maybe I should do this, maybe I'll do this now. And that's it, they're in that particular game, okay? But also with Jupiter, when it affects Rahu, depending upon which house it's affecting in, a lot of foreign objects or foreign things come into your life in that particular perspective. Let's say if it's in the fourth house, some foreign object come in, comes in your home. If it's going into the third house, you will travel somewhere short a lot related to Rahu. For example, let's say you just eat, or let's say you're an American. You were born here, raised here, you're not Indian, you're not Hindu, nothing. But for some reason, now that Jupiter is looking at Rahu, the confusion comes in, but also with that, you somehow finally start going into eating an Indian restaurant. Or you go start going and love, loving Japanese food and Chinese food for that particular time period. And as soon as Jupiter transit is over, you're done, you're, you go back. So look at these particular scenarios as well, you know, and if Jupiter is gonna be connected with moon, of course, either transfer, movement, travel will take place, okay? There's going to be tremendous amount of like shifting that takes place. Now, this doesn't mean just because Jupiter is connected with moon that you're going to move and shift. Some people actually would. Some people I know, they don't even have to be military. They're just like, because of their small projects, especially as a civil engineer, they move from one state to the other. Like this state, now they're working for this government project related to either a bridge or something else. And then after that's done, Within a year, now they get a contract from, let's say, Kansas to Wisconsin or from Oresa to Uttarakhand. They will go. So that's what happens. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for that. What's their name? Parjaval P. Let's hope you make a million this year. So um, that's what happens. And, and especially with... Jupiter and Moon come together, the mind just shifts. The mind becomes very influenced by a lot of things. You will see Jupiter and this, this is not Gach Kesri Yoga, like everybody wants to know, Jupiter and Moon. When Jupiter is affecting Moon in transit, one, one gets influenced by this source, that source, that source. The mind is like very changeable, baby, becomes very clever how to get its prosperity, okay? And this is a very good period, of course, for the mother. And what is a good period for the mother? Think about it. The only good period for mother is when, is when the child is prospering. Mother doesn't usually care. Most of the mothers won't care what's happening in their life. They just want their children to prosper. And this is why you will see when Jupiter is affecting the moon, the mother can become a grandmother. Mother will become a grandmother. And this is usually with the case when, of course, different cultural society will bring different perspectives. So in an Indian society, when you're married, of course, you're going to have children. So mother will become a grandmother. She becomes something grand because it's Jupiter. 
But again, you got to understand how to connect these Jupiter. I, I, I can't even do, I don't even see myself right now on this particular screen. Forget about me wanting to share a screen or something. Let's see. Yeah, I can't even do sh screen share on this. I thought they would be a little bit more advanced with this YouTube live. Um, unless I'm doing something wrong here. Uh, yeah, I don't know why I don't see myself. Hopefully, when this gets recorded, there's my my video was there. Um, so and then let's say Jupiter and Mercury. Well, because Jupiter is in Taurus, it brings you abundance of knowledge. And also with Jupiter and Moon, you're going to spend a lot of money. Because what, what is Moon? Cash flow. With Jupiter looking at Moon, it's going to entice your Moon to spend big. And if your time is good, why not? You should spend big. You want to get that silk clothing or that car or that toy that you've been looking at. You get it. But when Jupiter and Mercury come together, especially with Taurus sign, you begin to value knowledge. You're like, I need to learn more. I need to take on some additional education. I need to take Nandi Nadi course from Kapil. Because why? Because your intelligence is hungry now. Because Jupiter is appetite. Okay. Thank you, the holy loyness. And Sanjay, Rob, thank you. May you guys get all the fulfillment of desires this year. So, um, where was I? Would you, when Jupiter from Taurus is looking at Mercury or going over Mercury, your knowledge base is going to be hungry. Because what is Taurus? Taurus is food. So it's not like it's about money. It's about hunger for knowledge. And remember, it is that hunger for knowledge that now will bring you the abundance of business and multiplicity. Why? Because Mercury is multiplications. Mercury is multiplicity. So, and because and imagine, let's say, for example, you're doing astrology, right? You're an astrologer yourself. But let's say when Jupiter goes over Mercury, you learn something like Nandina. You learn something like Astrovastu. And it just opens up every single nadi in your brain that oh my god just because you know there's moon in the seventh house they actually had nothing but water in the southwest direction or they kept the picture of the mother in southwest direction and you can make these instant predictions like that when you see the chart so what did you do you had such hunger for knowledge that now not only it gave you the knowledge, because of its Taurus sign, it started bringing you more wealth because now people are like, oh my God, how are you doing these magical things? How were you able to tell that I put my mother's picture in Southwest direction? Or I had my sewing machine in the Southwest direction. Probably you had Moon Ketu in the seven. That's why you did. See, and this is more like, this is not Vastu, this is Astro Vastu. You look at the chart and you look at what the, where the planet is placed and that's it. Okay. Like if, for example, you got Rahu in the fourth house, either your house will add up to four, you will be on a high rise. Uh, okay. Or um, with Rahu, you will also have like a barren land in front. I mean, that's what it is. So where were we? Yeah, Jupiter and Mercury. And also with Jupiter and Mercury, as much as you learn, you will also question what you're learning. You're going to need that logic because Taurus is about money, banking. Banking doesn't work on intuition. At least that's what they teach us. Maybe all the bankers are using astrologers themselves. Maybe one day it will come out. But mainly it's about logic. Like, hey, how much did you give me? Here, this is what I'm giving you. Where's my interest? So the logic comes in, in Taurus, with Jupiter and Mercury. They're like, they, they're using their head too much. Okay, especially the right side of the brain. They want that money. So um, that's what will happen with Jupiter and Mercury. Hunger for knowledge. And through that knowledge, you'll make money. 
Um, then with Jupiter and Venus, of course, you're either going to get mo huge money, you're going to get vehicles and cars, some expensive item will come. See, again, this is all different. Like, like for example, if somebody's homeless and they have Jupiter and going over Venus or now being connecting with Venus through the naughty aspects, what's going to happen is uh, maybe the government that they're in, let's say you're in, there's so much homelessness in California. You know, I mean, if you go even where I used to live is nothing but encampments. I mean, I left that country. But if you go there, maybe now they'll pass the law that somebody who's homeless can now get a free phone and the government will pay for your phone. So you can connect with people and you can get paid. Like, for example, if you're homeless in China, what are, you're not going to get paid in yen. You're getting paid in WeChat, through WeChat, right? Dystopian society. So that's what's going to happen. So now they get a luxury item. Somebody who's a billionaire, like I said, they will increase their 100-foot yacht to a 600-foot yacht. That's it. So, yeah, somehow, some way, because Venus is what? Venus is wealth, money, vehicles, luxury, name brands. Okay. So these things will come in depending upon how your chart is. Through that, and it takes like an instant what exactly you will be getting this particular year. Even without the zodiac sign, you can see that. Without the zodiac sign, you don't need zodiac sign. Like with N N Nandi Nadi, if you learn it, especially the way I teach, you will put nakshatras in the back burner. You won't need nakshatras. You won't need even zodiac signs. You look and you say something. Um, and then, of course, with Jupiter and Venus in a man's chart, you will be coming across your wife or at least the potential of meeting people will be there. You may not be getting married. Depending upon your chart, you might be getting married four years from now or three years from now. Okay. Um, but it's going to bring a lot of dating opportunities, a lot of uh, meeting with women. Okay. Um, but a lot of potential for dating will just simply become active. Okay. So that, that will happen. And then um, what else? Uh, even with Venus, if you have daughters, your daughters will find abundance. Sister, see, Venus is sister, daughters, and women in general. Although the eldest daughter is going to be moon. Why? Because the elder, eldest daughter will always take the um, role of the mother. When mother's not there, is the elder, eldest sister who's always in charge of the home. So it's, the, it's moon. Then it's Venus and Mercury. Okay. Then if let's say Jupiter is going over Mars, right? Or is in connection with Mars with the naughty perspective. One thing you will see, definitely it'll bring conflict into the house that Jupiter is in, or I mean Mars is in. So wherever Mars is, it's going to see Mars is just Mars is energy that just love conflict. If you really want to know, doesn't matter if it's debilitated, doesn't matter if it's exalted, doesn't matter if it's in its own sign. It's kark abhasta what it matters. And so what is Mars? Mars is views, Mars is fights. You know, Mars brings cuts and bruises. So all these things will happen. Like, for example, if you have Mars, Venus together and Jupiter is in Taurus going over or looking at these particular planets, um, when you buy a car within a day or two, it'll get a scratch. Now, where will it get a scratch depends upon which house these uh, planets are conjunct in. You will see if it's in the eighth house, right in the where the back trunk area is of the car. Right. Usually now with electric carts, it's in the front, but the back bottom area will get a scratch on it. If it's in the let's say if it's in the um, third house or the sixth house, then the back door of the car will get a scratch around it. The best thing to do 
Well, actually, um, this is not something I can say here. I either I can only say these things when somebody's either getting a reading or when I've already taught this in the Nadi. Some things you can't say on YouTube because of their own policies and all that. So I won't say it. But yeah, there's a very simple remedy and all that. But yeah, well, I mean, and also with the, uh, Jupiter meeting Mars is what? In a female star, you're going to meet the husband. You're going to meet the potential partner. It's not like you're going to get married. Again, don't think it. Don't think you're going to get married. That will happen only in a certain position, certain age. That's where we also have to see the progression cycle of, uh, you know, the planets. But here you will meet the potential. A lot of potentials will become active. And also depends on the degree. Remember the example I gave of Sun Rahu. How first this comes, then this comes. So maybe you're like, okay, what happened? Why am I not seeing somebody? Jupiter has entered Taurus and it's right over my Mars. It may not be over your Mars just yet. It's going to get to your Mars. These are the simplicity. Once you know this, then, then again, nothing really matters. Okay. When Jupiter goes over Saturn, naturally prosperity in one's career takes place. New beginning in career happens. When Jupiter goes over Saturn or Jupiter itself, it brings new beginnings. For example, you're working on one long project in your work as an engineer. Suddenly when Jupiter goes over Saturn, suddenly the project switched to something else. Like a lot of people are like, even when Jupiter goes over Saturn, they get laid off or fired. Why? Because something better comes along. Always I've seen this. Somebody loses a job, and they're like, oh my God, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? What's going to The next thing you know, they're getting something which is like 20%, 30% more than what they were getting before. Like, oh my God, thank goodness I, this happened. But yeah, Jupiter going over Saturn doesn't usually do that. That will be the job of other planet. That will, uh, you know, cut you off from one thing and take you to another. But Jupiter is going to bring that. It brings a lot of uh, beginnings and prosperity in your elder brother's life. In your uh, paternal elder uncle's life. A lot of your chronic health issues find a lot of temporary solution. Because if it's chronic, it's chronic. Right? Like especially if it's in the sixth house, yeah, medicine will help you. If it's in the eighth, then divine health will help you. But uh, it gives you relief from those chronic health issues. And then especially with Ketu. Well, welcome to astrology. You will start. I started my journey when I looked back. My Jupiter was going right over Ketu. And that's when my first, first interaction with seriousness of astrology began. So you're going to be either a lot of Jupiter with Ketu. You will either be joining medical schools, designing schools. You're going to get into like jewelry making. You suddenly will be introduced to KRS channel and start learning astrology and fall in love with astrology. And let's say your Ketu is in the seventh house. You're going to bring Ganesha Murti in your home and then you'll put it in the southwest direction. Which will have its own effect. Either it will improve marriage or business or something. Depends upon what other planet is there. This is what you're going to do. Or if Ketu is in some other house, then you'll put your, uh, you'll bring Ganesha's Murti and put it in Southeast. You may, you may even bring statue of Chintamasya. Chintamasya is Ketu. So you'll bring her statue uh, on it. So have we covered, did we cover, we pretty much have covered all the planets, right? Like if Jupiter goes over Jupiter, with connected with Taurus, by taking blessings of a guru, it can bring abundance in your life. Okay. It can suddenly, especially when you want transformation, go touch a guru's feet when Jupiter is in Taurus. Think about it. Think, 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 think. It's a thinking game of like tic-tac-toe. It's fun. Why is it that right now? 
meeting a guru touching their feet can take you out of the biggest disaster or suddenly transform your life. Because why from Taurus, the sign of Pisces becomes the 11th house, which is gains, profits. And the 8th house is the Guru. So Guru's feet is the Pisces. 8th house is Sagittarius. And from the 9th Sagittarius is the 8th house, which is the feet of the Guru. So touching the feet not only takes you out of sudden calamities, also fulfills your desires during this time. So it's very important. Okay, thank you, Kajens. So, and, and then, so you don't need to know, like I'm an Aries ascendant or Taurus ascendant, where is the Jupiter, what's gonna happen? Those things will or will not happen, okay? But what I'm telling you here today, It'll, it's going to happen. Okay. Like, for example, right now, with Saturn and Mars together, what's happening is something known as Yum Yoga becomes active. Like just yesterday, the whole bridge fell down in Baltimore. You saw what happened in Russia. These things have always happened. This is why I didn't even care to make a video because go back when Saturn and Mars are conjunct last time. You'll automatically know the world news that happened. And especially, again, if you look, uh, well, actually, I won't even get into that. But that, that's what they're going to do. And especially um, the most interesting transit, which I will probably will not do this year, next year, when Saturn enters Pisces. That is a very unique, unique, unique uh, transit. Okay. It's especially when you look at it from the Nadi's perspective. Uh, it's it's a very good transit. Not good as in good or bad. I'm just saying it's the most interesting for me. When I was looking at it, it became the most interesting. And then like, a, and especially like the remedy, remedial part. Like what would be the remedy for this? The remedy starts with a planet and it ends with a planet. Always remember that. And I've shown this in my one minute divorce technique, one minute marriage technique on Nandinari. But please don't join it if you are not wanting to see negative predictions about yourself. And if you're sensitive, please do not join that course. I've already said, I don't need you. I don't need that money from you if you're gonna be afraid and you're gonna be depressed after looking at that technique. It's better to just follow the fun YouTube astrology and just just keep your life going and don't get into those things because depends on the age, especially in twenties. You wouldn't want to know. I wouldn't want to know in my twenties. Now being in my forties, I couldn't care what myself was in twenties. Like I I I wouldn't do half the things I did in relationships in my twenties if I was in my forties because then you realize it's all just it's all just useless the way we are in our 20s in terms of love and relationships. So anyway, um, hopefully my video shows up when I end the stream. But yeah, I think you guys, if as long as you know how the aspects work of Nadi, 311, trying, seven, you will know exactly what is to happen with this particular Jupiter. So, yeah, that's it. Um, the thing is, the whole time I'm just thinking right now, this is probably not going to do anything because the my audio won't come, my video won't come, but I, apparently nobody's saying that I can't, we can't hear you, we can't see you. So I know that you guys are seeing me. So, and then also right after I'm done with Nandina, I'm gonna bring the most unique course regarding time and money time and money you will see okay no need to touch my feet virtually you touch the real guru's feet please don't do that um so anything interesting what uh, so what about jupiter transit over your seventh lord does that transit no 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 what is where is what is D9? Over D9 ascendant also count. I don't know what D9 is. 
So I can't really answer that. Seventh Lord, which Lord is it? You see, it doesn't matter if it's seventh Lord or fourth Lord. I just need to know what planet it is. Then we can see. That's it. This is how simple. See, I know we make our life complicated. What is the Ashtabharga of Jupiter? What is it in D9? See, when you're looking at Nandi Nadi, you forget all of that. Don't, don't, don't. Just think you don't know Vedic astrology at all. You're starting from zero. You're starting from zero. And you're just going with a blank slate. You cannot learn what I'm teaching if you're going to mix that with the Vedic astrology. Once you do that, you are going to have, instead of a smaller, bigger bag of confusion. So I don't even know what D9 is, even though I know. Um, so my, uh, why isn't this stopping? Retrograde Jupiter. Um, so yeah, I mean, what happens with a retrograde Jupiter is that it's still going to affect the planets that it's looking at right but this is why they always say that they pay always attention to retrograde planets in the birth chart or when it's in transit because now it's affecting not just one two three four five they're not just affecting six houses they're not affecting the entire chart this is why you will not understand the real meaning of a retrograde planet from normal Parashri Vedic astrological standpoint, unless we missed some slokas in there. But from Nadi, you understand why, what happens with a retrograde. Retrograde Jupiter, a person usually always feels aimless, right? Unless they come to somebody like an astrologer and ask them, what is it do I need? What is my aim in this life? Because what happens now, Jupiter is taking the qualities of everything. It's like you're not going and eating one slice of pizza. You're not eating dal and roti. You're going to like one of those South Indian restaurants where they give you like 20 different bowls with rice in the middle. And then they'll give you a puri or, you know, roti. Now you have like every single choice you're going to work. And if Saturn Rahu gets involved, now you have to. It's like you must, you have to actually go to an astrologer to figure out what is it that you should be doing? Where is it that you should be going? This is why, so whenever Jupiter retrogrades, there's also other techniques as well with that retrogression. But the main thing is, it now starts affecting everything. So whether it was to be negative, positive, they both come in. Okay. Will Jupiter transit over Dharakarka cause marriage? It's not that easy. It's one of the techniques. If you want to talk about the Vedic perspective, yes. It will grant that permission, knowing that it's the lowest degree. But again, it's it's all about... It does, the simpler you keep it, the better you will love astrology. You got to understand. Uh, there's just a simple technique for marriage and marriage timing. Yes. Subconsciously, I still use all the things that I use. I use Dara Karka. I'll use Navamsha. Give me a... It's like, look, it's like if you have a hammer and a nail... Right, you, you can still put the nail in the wall. But now if you also have a chisel, you have a drill, you have an electric uh, you know, driller and, and screwdriver, now you're not just doing one thing, you're, you can build a whole cabin, your own cabin for, with all these tools. So it's always great to use them. But if let's say it was somebody who just wants to keep their one focused Mind just simplest thing I just told you with Venus and Mars in the transit. Okay. Jupiter in the eighth trine from Venus. 
Well, it's going to be trying from Venus. Okay, if blessings comes in slow, when Jupiter is in the eighth transiting, looking at Venus, but it eventually gets there. It eventually gets there. Even from black hole, the light escapes. Okay, that's why I think you have those pulsars, right? Not quasars, pulsars. Where sometimes light does escape and light does reach us to some other part of galaxy from the black hole. You go from one end of the space-time continuum to the other. So it reaches, but again, it's going to do the same thing as Venus. So instead of, let's say, you getting a Mercedes G wagon for yourself, you might just get like an iPhone, a new iPhone 15, 16, whatever it is. You will get that, you know, but it's doing the same thing. It doesn't matter. This is why I said, um, so what I'm telling you, the signs and houses don't even matter, actually. They don't. Look how simple I've made this. Okay. Uh, yeah. So anyway, let's. I just want to test and see if this works, actually. What if this doesn't work? It's a blank screen. Because then I'll have to remake this video from, probably I'll make it from this camera. Anyway, thank you so much. If you need readings, caresastrology.com. Or if you want to then learn Nandinati, you can go to careschannel.thinkeffect.com or just go to caresastrology.com under courses. It's there. Anyway, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.